This is day four of my story in four. And today is going to be a new step that we did not do last week. So first of all, remember that I really want you to wait to do this lesson until you have had the lesson from me during class. That will help you to really understand what I want you to do and make sure that you don't have to go back and fix it because you didn't have all of the instructions. This is just a review to help you so in case you get stuck, you know what you need to um, do at this point. So first of all, you have the stories that you wrote yesterday and you have your first, next, then, and finally sentences. Now, as a good writer, we need to make sure that we tell our reader everything that we want to tell them in our story. And when we did our reading, we learned that um, a story tells us the characters of the story. And the characters are the people, animals, and creatures of the story. And we want to make sure that with our story, we have the characters. We also want to make sure that we have the setting. And the setting is the time and the place of the story. Then we should have three events. Well, we have next, then, and finally. So hopefully we do have three events in our story. And we also know that characters probably change, usually change at the end of the story. But we're actually not going to focus on that part today because that's going to be later on when we're writing. What we really want to focus on today is those first two parts of the story, which is where we tell the characters and the setting of the story. So when I look at my writing, I know that the characters and setting should be at the beginning because that is where we find that information in a regular story. Um, when I read my first sentence, it says, first, we took our buckets and shovels down to the beach. All right, well, I said we, so that tells you that one of the characters is me, but it doesn't tell you who the rest of the characters are. And so for a good story, I should really be telling who the characters are in my story. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to edit this story, which is our step four. And um, that's exactly what I'm expecting you to do today, is to go back into your story and figure out how can you add your characters and your setting to the story. So let me make my adjustment. I know that it says first we, and I need to change the we to who the characters really are. And that was first Wade, Kenzie, and I. So Wade and Kenzie are my kids. And we took our shovels, our buckets and shovels down to the beach. So that tells who the characters are in the story. Now I need to figure out the setting. And the setting is the time and the place of the story. So first, Wade, Kenzie, and I took our buckets and shovels down to the beach. Ah, oh, hey, the beach. That's the setting, right? That's the place of the story. But I don't have a time. So I didn't say when we did this. Um, where could I, what could I say to tell the time? I could say it was 8 a.m., First, at 8 a.m., Wade, Kenzie, and I took our buckets and shovels down to the beach. Um, and that works, but I don't really remember exactly when the time was. I do know that we had eaten lunch when we carried our shovels and buckets down to the beach. So maybe I could say, um, first, Wade, Kenzie, and I had lunch and took our buckets and shovels down to the beach. Oh, well, that sounds really awkward because it wasn't like we, the first thing we did was have lunch, and lunch is really not important to my story because my story is about building a sandcastle. So how else could I phrase this and say this to tell the time of my story? Hmm, so... Another way I could say this would be, um, after lunch, the first thing we, Kenzie, and I did was take our buckets and shovels down to the beach. Well, that sounds a little bit better. Um, notice that if I say it that way, after lunch, 
the first thing Wade, Kenzie, and I did was take our buckets and shovels down to the beach. Um, so for this one, I had to change some of the words that were in my sentence to make the sentence correct. And you'll notice that I don't have the word first actually first. And that's okay because I still have it in my sentence because it does help the reader to understand the order the events occurred in my story. And you know what? I kind of like that. Actually, it's pretty good. But there's other ways I could do this. So let me go back and start from where I was. So again, I have first way Kenzie and I took our buckets and shovels down to the beach. Now remember, I'm trying to figure out the time of the setting that I want to put in my story. And I could say, first way Kenzie and I took our buckets and shovels down to the beach. Next, we spent the afternoon building a big sandcastle. Hmm. Does afternoon tell you the time? Yes, it does. Does the beach tell you the place? Yes, it does. Are my characters in my story? Yes, they are. And do I still have my time order words? First, next, then, finally? Yes, I sure do. I kind of like this one the best because I think it's very clear when the time is and um, it worked well with my sentence. It's not my first sentence, and that's okay. Remember that setting is usually done at the beginning of the story, and the second sentence is still the beginning of my story. We can play around with different ways to add our characters and setting, and that's okay. You might even need some help from me to give you ideas, and that's great because writing is a tricky thing, and the more people we ask, the better our writing can become. So I want you to go back to your writing that you did yesterday and make sure that you have your characters in your story and your setting, which is the time and place in your story. And then we'll finish there for today.